The last, and perhaps most important, of the classical theorists is Max Weber, whose writings were prolific and whose legacy to sociology is enduring. Weber most properly belongs among the big three of classical theorists, that is, Durkheim, Emil Durkheim, Karl Marx, and Max Weber. Whereas all three sociologists examined modernization and the modernization process, Weber viewed this as a process of rationalization, that is, with an eye toward the increasing organization of all forms of social life in accordance with the principles of efficiency and the application of increasingly sophisticated technology. Weber also introduced comparative interpretative sociology that is, the study of how culture and values inform So, For Weber, rationalization provided the key driver for modern social and economic life. He asked a key question, why did this happen first in the West? A separate lecture on the Protestant ethic and the spirit of, spirit of capitalism addresses this question. Weber also introduced the idea of social actors and meaningful social action, interpreting behavior through Verstehen, or understanding. He showed how values and ideas might shape societies through the meaningful social actions of its members. Lastly, Weber made contributions to the sociology of religion and to comparative historical methods using ideal types. These ideal types, or the idea of ideal types, informed his sociology of religion. The most significant transition for sociology in the thinking of Max Weber was his emphasis on meaningful social action, that is, action that is oriented toward the behavior of others, an interpretative analysis of this, and Verstehen, or that is, understanding of action from the viewpoint of the social actor. Meaningful social action can be rational or non-rational. Weber classified social action into one of four ideal types. Two types of rational action, value rational and instrumental, and two types of non-rational action emotional, and traditional. Value rational action involves commitment to a set of values, such as family values, ethical values, or religious values. Actors are bound to the actions, even if these are costly from an instrumental point of view. Instrumental rational action, by contrast, is strategic, driven by analysis of cost benefits, rationally weighing the goals and means. At the macro or meso level, this means organization according to the principles of efficiency as characteristic of the modern factory or bureaucracy. Meaningful social action also includes non-rational action that is, emotional action or behavior driven by positive or negative emotions, and traditional action based on social habits or customs. Empirically, social action does not always or necessarily correspond to only one ideal type of social action. In fact, social action is generally multidimensional that is motivated by multiple drivers. Retail checkouts, for example, with digital technology are an instrumentally rational cost-saving initiative. But cashiers and customers are also motivated by emotion, that is the intrinsic pleasure of face-to-face -face connections and identity-affirming value of sociability that is, enjoying the opportunity to chat 
and extend hospitality to others. That extension of hospitality may in fact become a rational marketing strategy. Another key dimension in Weber's work is his analysis of the transformation of power, authority, and domination with the shift to the modern world. Power represents the capacity to impose one's will in the face of opposition. Authority, by contrast, is legitimate power or legitimate domination that enhances the probability that commands will be obeyed. Weber identified three ideal types of authority. Traditional, rational, legal, and charismatic. Traditional authority rests on the sanctity of tradition, religious myths, and age-old rules and means. Rational legal authority is characteristic of the modern nation state. The modern state is a rational actor that has a monopoly on violence. It can legitimately use physical force to protect the nation's territory or to protect the nation's security. States may seek to expand their power and prestige, but not always through force. They may also use nonviolent means such as diplomacy and negotiation. And states are not like empires. They, the territorial boundaries of nation states are fixed. Rational legal authority is typically exercised through bureaucracies, that is formal organizations, much like the hierarchical organizations discussed by Chandler in his description of the emerging corporation or railways at the beginning of the 20th century. These are organized according to the principles of efficiency. Bureau bureaucratic authority pervades modern society and is pervasive across all institutional spheres. The key characteristic of bureaucracies is that they are rational, they're impersonal, they have a hierarchy, a division of labor, a focus on specific competencies, contractual relationships, tele technical qualifications, fixed salaries. Uh, the office holder has the office as his primary occupation. There's a system of promotion uh, and hiring. It's impersonal. Uh, the workers do not own the means of administration, and there is systematic discipline in the conduct of office or rank. Weber also noted the persistence and existence and function of charismatic authority, which is a form of a non-rational authority. It can coexist alongside legal, rational, and traditional authority. It resides in the individual. The individual charismatic leader persuades people at least initially, to do things. The charismatic community is unified by the members' shared emotional attachment to the charismatic leader. Uh, examples can be positive or negative. Uh, Napoleon, Hitler, Martin Luther King, or Gandhi. Finally, Weber also dealt with social stratification, but unlike Marx, Weber sees multiple sources and gradients of inequality and stratification. He employs three dimensions of uh, socioeconomic status, class or economic resources, status or social status, prestige and honor, and finally, party or political power. A second lecture on Weber deals specifically with uh, the Protestant ethic and spirit of capitalism, this one has focused a, a synopsis on some of the major or key ideas found in the corpus of work of Max Weber.